Hey guys, my name's Nadia. Um, I am originally from Vancouver, but I came to Australia in 20, uh, 2018. Um, so I guess the reason why I sort of chose Australia was because um, the program was essentially, it was basically for the program, because as you all know, in Canada, we don't have that undergrad entry into medicine. And I knew coming out of high school that, you know, medicine was sort of something that I wanted to pursue. So I guess that was one reason for me. Um, I know I had a lot of friends in high school that were sort of debating, you know, um, between going to the UK, because the UK also offers undergrad um, programs and entries into medicine. I guess the reason that that sort of deterred me and I was more drawn to Australia was, as sort of Ashish has already mentioned, it's very similar to the Canadian system. Um, Australians are really friendly, like Canadians as well. Our government systems are very similar. Um, as well, I guess, financially thinking, um, the Australian dollar at the time when I applied was equivalent. Now the Canadian dollar is actually um, higher, which is great. Um, and so that was sort of what played into me choosing Australia. Um, and I guess the fact that I had already been here before to sort of um, travel and things like that. And it was a place that I sort of know that I, I liked and um, I could see myself studying in. In terms of, I guess, like the program at Griffith, it's sort of that two plus four that Ashish was mentioning earlier. So in the first two years, you do your undergrad and, you know, you graduate with a Bachelor of Medical Science. You have a, you know, a grad ceremony and everything for that. Um, and then the next four years are sort of your four years of medical school. Um, and I guess the other reason why I chose Griffith as well was because if, you know, for whatever reason, something happened and I didn't like it here, you know, at the end of two years, really, it was a year and 10 months that the undergrad program went for. If I didn't like it or whatever happened, you know, I could come back to Canada with a bachelor's degree that I got in a year and 10 months. So that was something that, you know, I sort of considered as well. And um, in terms of the med program, like when I was in med school, uh, our first two years were pre-clinical pre pre years. So you spent a lot of time um, in the university going through like anatomy labs, pathology labs, getting to um, sort of uh, interact with fake patients. So they'd have actors essentially that would come in and you'd have a scenario and they'd sort of um, act as a patient. You'd get a clinical question and you just get a chance to interact and sort of see how you went. Um, there. So I thought that that was really good. And Griffith has a really good like anatomy program and a program for patient interactions like that. Um, a brand new building and everything built specifically for that. So I thought that that was good and something that I um, uh, something that sort of drew me towards it as well. In terms of, I guess, what um, at the time when I was applying, um, some of the courses that I did in high school, I think were like AP Chem, AP English. I did bio calc. Um, I did Mandarin and I did pre-calc and all of those courses sort of combined into my average when I applied. And I guess the good thing about applying, um, to like the Gold Coast Griffith was that the admissions were like a rolling admission. So if you applied early enough, the, um, and you met sort of their minimum criteria for whatever the GPA average was that they were looking for, you would get an offer. So I think for me, if I recall correctly, I think I started my application in about March, gathering all my documents, emailing it to Austract and just sort of checking in with them to see what um, they required of me. Um, and then in about early April, Austract submitted my application for me. And I think I got my uh, application like acceptance offer about a month later in May. Um, so I was really lucky that it happened pretty quick. And then I could sort of make a decision as to, okay, do I then um, apply to Canadian universities or do I go ahead with Australia? So for me, it was go ahead with Australia because I had known a little bit earlier in the year, which was great. And I guess it was good in the sense that also you get a bit of a six month break before um, starting the next year in February. So you can really plan what to do with your time and things like that. Um, in terms of what I think of Australia in general is I'm, I'm currently an intern at the Gold Coast University Hospital. I've done my placement in cardiology and I'm also um, now starting um, to work in the emergency department. I personally think that I'm going to stay in Australia just because I really like the system here. I've been here for seven years now. Um, it's somewhere that I can sort of call home. I think that the Gold Coast in general, where I live, is 
hot, sunny, beautiful place to live, lots of beaches. It's really easy to get around to other places in Australia. Like flight, you could you could take a flight for an hour for like a hundred bucks and you'll be in Sydney. So really great to travel around Australia. And um, as uh, Raquette mentioned as well, you know, Bali is not too far away. New Zealand's not too far away. For me, I'm from Vancouver. So, you know, a flight back to Vancouver is just a one way, you know, you get on, you sleep and you're there. So that was good for me, the place at least. Um, the people, like I said, Australians are really friendly, like Canadians. They're often very curious about Canadian culture and, um, it's easy to have a good laugh with them for sure. In, ten, in terms of living here, I guess things um, to, that I would have liked to know before I moved here was that rent is actually, you pay rent weekly, not monthly. It's also very hot in Australia, as you can imagine, and not all units have air conditioning. So would definitely recommend buying somewhere or renting somewhere that has an air condition um, in the apartment. Um, and if you're buying unfurnished as well, or renting unfurnished, note that, you know, you don't have appliances like fridges and washing machines that usually come. That was very surprising when I first moved here and I had moved in into an unfurnished place and I saw that there was no fridge, there was no washing machine. It was just very, um, very different. And I wish I had known that before moving. For me, I've lived um, in uh, like apartments and rented the entire time that I've been here. But I know that it's really popular as well for a lot of people to, um, rent by the university if you're if you're um going to apply to griffith i would actually recommend not rent not staying at the uni and probably just staying somewhere along the tram line i think that was the biggest piece of advice that i also got before moving here and i i i've been in the same place for the past seven years and i think it's, it's made a lot of things a lot easier and not having to move and um just the university is right across from the hospital as well. So um, very easily accessible by tram and the bus. So that's something that I would recommend. Uh, when you go out to eat, you know, tax and tip is always included in the bill. So that's always great. Um, and then I guess the other piece of advice or wisdom that I'd pass on to anyone that's considering moving here is to make sure that you actually have a life outside of medicine and it is possible and you don't need to feel guilty about it like I think we come into this you know a new country and we're studying very intense degrees and it, we can oftentimes feel like oh you know I'm here to study I need to study I need to get good grades I need to class and like you feel guilty about doing anything outside of that I definitely think that it's so possible to do so many things outside of it when I was um in my undergrad years, I was an anatomy tutor and I love that. I, I, I found it really rewarding. I also learned a lot from being a tutor, not just teaching people, but I would learn from my students as well. When I was in med school, I was a support worker for disabled um, young adults and uh, children as well. And I thought I found that that was a, a nice takeaway from just my studies and things like that. Um, I also joined like lots of sports clubs with the uni, like we had beach volleyball clubs, we had basketball clubs, things like that. So don't be afraid to do things outside of medicine. You don't have to feel bad. You always need an outlet from what you're, whether you're studying or whether you're working, you know, you need to, you need to be doing something outside of it just, just to get your mind off of things and do find things that you enjoy as well. <laughs>